Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, back again with Plantmas Day 8. And in today's Plantmas video, I'm going to be doing an overview of all the features and a pen test for the Jumping Fox Notebook. I have the forest green linen version and I love this linen fabric on the cover. I've always been a big fan of linen, but I just love the more textured fabric and the variation in the color. I just find it absolutely stunning and I love the packaging. I think the box this comes in is genius and just so well designed and simple yet effective. I'm a big fan. This is a hardcover A5 size notebook with 140 numbered dot grid pages. There's a table of contents and at the back of the notebook there are eight perforated sheets that you can easily remove from the notebook. As you can see, it has a little silver fox logo on the front. The page edges are also silver, which is really beautiful. And on the back, it says Jumping Fox Design, very minimal, embossed in silver at the bottom. There's also the standard elastic closure and expandable pocket, as well as two bookmarks. The notebook opens flat and they say it's ink proof, acid free paper. So let's flip through these pages and see what we've got. So in the inside cover, we have the please return to section, the contact page. There's a blank page and then we have a table of contents, which is two lined pages. Then there's a blank page on the back of that. And then we jump right into the numbered dot grid pages. I'd say the dots are sort of in the middle as far as how dark they are. I've seen notebooks with lighter gray dots and I've also seen notebooks with darker dots. This paper is an ivory paper, not quite cream, but definitely leaning that way. And when I measured to check, this dot grid is in fact a five millimeter dot grid. These are what the perforated pages look like. I've seen a few different notebooks that have perforated pages in the back, and I think it can be really useful. I know my husband had a Dean Bats notebook that had perforated pages in the back, and he loved to be able to pull them out and use them for notes when he was at work. So that might be a big plus depending on who you are and how you like to use your bullet journal. So this paper is supposed to be ink proof and it's 120 GSM. So as you'll know, I prefer a thicker paper. I always go for 160 GSM. A big pet peeve of mine is ghosting. I just can't stand it. And I also like to use some heavier paints and other mediums in my bullet journal that just do better with a thicker paper. But of course, everyone wants different things out of their notebooks, out of their paper. I know there are a lot of people out there who just do not like super thick paper. They don't like 160 GSM paper. So for those people, this notebook may be just the thing. So I'm doing a pen test with a bunch of different pens and highlighters and paint markers and brush pens and watercolor and a fountain pen to try to get as many different mediums on here as possible just to see how the paper holds up. So all the supplies I'm testing will be linked in the description box in the order that I tested them. So if you're looking for something in particular, all that information will be down there. I did notice the paper in this journal had a slight texture to it. It doesn't have a rough feeling, but you can kind of see almost micro wrinkles in the paper when you look really close. And it kind of reminds me of handmade artisan papers. So I don't know all of the details for how this paper is manufactured, but I found that really interesting. I tried to get some close up shots while I was filming this video to show you the texture, but I'm not sure if you'll be able to see on camera. They are very small and it does make the paper slightly less smooth to the touch than some other papers I've tested, though I still wouldn't say it's rough by any means. I wanted to test some paints on this paper as well as do a smudge test. So I decided to do a smudge test for all the pens I tested at the top of the page. And I was actually pretty surprised and impressed by the smudge test. This paper seems to be on the drier side. So while all the pens had at least a tiny bit of smudging on the one second test, by five seconds, almost all of the pens had completely dried down. The only pens that still smudged were the gel pens and the very thick nibbed wetter pens like the Secura Micron 08 and the Faber-Castell S. I also found it really interesting that all three of the white pens that I tested, so my Uniball Signo gel pen, the white Acrylograph, and the white Uni Posca pen, they all really camouflaged into the paper, I think more than I've ever seen on any notebook. 
And I honestly found this surprising because this paper is more of an ivory off-white, but for whatever reason, I don't know what it is about this particular paper. I found it was almost impossible to see the writing after they dried down. And I almost did the paint test on top of where the white pen was because I just literally couldn't see it. And I found it really hard to get a shot that really showed the white writing on camera as well. So I was really pleasantly surprised by that. I guess this means if you go for this notebook that it'll be really easy to find a white pen to fix your mistakes, which is honestly never a bad thing. Now, the biggest drawback to this paper for my personal uses is the fact that it is 120 GSM. It's just a lighter weight paper than I would go for. So take my opinion with a grain of salt. I went into reviewing this knowing that the paper would not be thick enough to meet my personal standards. But again, you know your own preferences best, you know your needs best. And if you're someone who prefers a lighter weight paper, this may be exactly what you need. For me, it has more ghosting than I would prefer. The only bleeding I got was from the Copic sketch marker, which is to be expected. It is an alcohol based marker marker and a tiny bit on my wettest watercolor test. As I try to do in all my pen test videos, when I test watercolor, I try to do three tests from mostly dry to a little more water to quite a bit of water loaded on the page to really get a good feel for how the paper will react to watercolor. And on that third test that was very loaded up with water where it was kind of pooling on the page, we did get three little dots of bleed through. Again, this paper is 120 GSM. I would not recommend painting with a lot of water loaded on the brush on 120 GSM paper. It's just probably not gonna work out, but I did wanna do the test just to show you so you can get a feel for how this paper performs. I'd say I'm pretty impressed by how this paper held up taking it at face value as 120 GSM paper. I really like the very subtle texture to it and that it is a very dry paper. The drier the paper, the better for me personally, as far as my preferences go. It is not a coated paper. It is not super smooth. So you're gonna have more trouble blending on the page on this kind of a paper. If you like to blend Tombos together on the page, acrylographs together on the page, this kind of paper is not gonna help you in that because it is so dry. Again, as y'all know, if you've watched other pen test videos from me. I love a dry paper because I am impatient and I hate smudging. So this is right up my alley for that. I think if I had found these notebooks maybe four years ago before I got into painting in my journal and I was still using notebooks like Moleskin, this would have been such an upgrade and I would have really loved it. I think just my own personal tastes have evolved in a different direction since then. But I think this notebook could be a great choice for Lots of people out there who prefer a slightly lighter weight paper, like something a little drier with a touch of texture and aren't necessarily going to be trying to do really water heavy paintings in their bullet journal or again, blending Tombos on the page, for example. I think the number of pages could also be a drawback for some people, depending on what you like. This notebook does only have 140 pages, and I know that a lot of people prefer their notebooks to have at least 200. So that is something to keep in mind. Some people prefer a smaller notebook, so it's easier to carry with them. While this notebook does have a hard cover, it's not nearly as heavy as a lot of the A5 notebooks on the market, I've noticed. I'm sure part of that is that it has a lighter weight paper and fewer pages total, but that is kind of a nice benefit if you are carrying your bullet journal around with you in your bag every day. Some notebooks can be quite heavy, so not to reiterate, but I'm going to. Your preferences are your own and they're going to differ from mine or anyone else's. So my hope with this video is just to present the information and tell you about it and you can make your own decision about whether this would be a good notebook for you. As I said, I'm impressed with it. It's not something I would personally use, but I can totally see how people would love it and it could be a great notebook for a lot of people out there. So this is my overview of the features and pen test for the Jumping Fox notebook. Thank you to Jumping Fox for sending me this notebook so that I could test it out. I am doing a giveaway for a Jumping Fox notebook in this video. So check out the description box for the details, the rules, how to enter. Good luck. Before I go, I wanna take a second to thank my patrons for their support. My patrons are the absolute best. Here are all their names. If you wanna join us, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. And with that, I'm gonna get going. Thank you so much for watching Plantmas Day 8, and I will see you really soon in tomorrow's video for Plantmas Day 9. Bye friends.